Good morning. Well, you had a, a nice camp last night. It's getting pretty cold. My furnace is acting up a little bit again where it, it keeps turning itself off. So I woke up uh, this morning and it was quite cold in the van, but uh, underneath all those blankets, I don't even really need the furnace. I mean, I'm sure there there is a temperature cold enough that it would be an issue, but um, yeah, under the blankets, I'm fine. It's just that then I don't want to get out of bed. Um, other issues is uh, the battery started acting up. The battery bank as a whole, since it's all wired together, will just, the whole thing will start acting up. And then you have to disconnect the batteries from each other and then test each one after they've leveled out. Um, I don't know that I've conclusively said it was the 12 volt and not the two six volts. Because if you'll remember, I have two six volt deep cycles in series and then a 12 volt deep cycle in parallel to that. So that the whole system together, which shouldn't work well at all, works extremely well, like better than the sum of its parts. So I disconnected them. The six volts, I'm, I'm running everything on the six volt battery bank right now, which is about 255 amp hours. That is running as it should. That's running normally. The 12 volt is down at 12.75 uh, volts. So it's not really dipping low. It's not going low, but, um, now that it's not connected, my I'm getting much more juice out of my battery bank. So I have to assume the 12 volt is messed up. I'm leaving it in there for now because honestly, the six volt battery, 255 amp hours is fine for what I'm doing. Um, I mean, I only have all of that in there because I have the space for it. So uh, I'm just leaving this 12 volt in there and then I'll use it for like emergencies or something maybe or or um, once the battery bank gets really low, maybe I can have like a shunt and just reconnect it and bring it up a little bit. Cause it sounds like the, the 12 volts at like 20% of its regular capacity. And that's what's, it's starting to be at the point where it's burning down the other battery banks. So um, yeah, it's pretty much the end of its life. Other news. No, that's, that's pretty much it. I'm heading into the uh, Grand Tetons or as uh if you're French, you'll know them as the Big Titty. Well, I'm heading into the Big Titty today, and uh, I'm pretty excited about it because America has named everything in the vicinity Titty or Big Titty, which I love big time. <laughs> I think it's really funny. All right, I'm gonna make some breakfast here, warm this camp up a little bit, and then we'll hit the road. Well, this morning I'm doing a bit of a regular breakfast, um, which if you're Canadian is a little bit of a maple sausage, some fried up potatoes, some eggs, maybe a little bit of toast too, some OJ or some coffee. I'm sorry, I've been watching a lot of uh, sail bloating vlogs. What I do is I download them onto my tablet and then I watch them while I'm out here uh, at night, often photo editing or something like that. And uh, it's got me really appreciating how good I have it and really I do like this this lifestyle it doesn't take me much effort to just go and see another like beautiful natural wonder or an amazing kitschy site or meet some cool locals like it's super easy in a camper van and it's a lot harder by sailboat but <clears throat> if Baja has taught me anything it's that that kind of ease that you have even in canada is much more difficult like in the us it's just so easy to travel by car by vehicle it's not like that everywhere else and and that's i think the main reason i want to get into sailing is because i want to see all the countries where you just can't drive them you couldn't buy a camper van in fiji and just you know do fiji by camper van you couldn't it, you could i don't know maybe you could but it's just like in terms of cost efficiency, a sailboat starts to make a lot more sense at that point. But that being said, getting to land and seeing all of the stuff that's at land will be a top priority for me on a sailboat. So, um, yeah, just want to let you guys know where my, where my head's at. And, and I often get that question, why, why get into sailboating? It's so expensive. It's so this, it's so that. Yes, I understand all those things, but, uh, yeah. There's just a lot of other stuff to see. And there's a lot of other countries where you can also camper van too. I mean, like Australia is pretty high up there. Apparently you can camper van. Most first world countries pretty well, a lot of Europe pretty well. Um, but none of them really compare to the ease of which you can do it in America. So yeah, I'm just looking forward to the change.
All right, well, I've reached the end of the plowed road, which was kind of hairy in and of itself. And uh, now we're in snowmobiler territory, which uh, I don't know if you've noticed, but I don't have a snowmobile on the back of my van. I do have a dirt bike. And the consensus from the locals here is that the road or path that the snowmobiles take is so beaten in that I might be able to navigate it by dirt bike. It's a good nine and a half miles to the hot spring from here. So uh, normally on a dirt bike, that's no problem, but on really rough, like snowy, slushy, all over the place, might be a real challenge, but an urban known to back down from a challenge. So here we go. Ah, oh, well, that sucked a lot. Uh, I got like 20 feet in. Oh, I just, I did a lot of research for this hot spring and nothing about the snowmobile stuff popped up at all. It just really pisses me off, like how you could be as prepared as you could possibly be and still be completely unprepared. I guess that's the nature of travel. It's the nature of the travel I'm doing. Ironically, it's too warm for my motorcycle to go across because everything's melting and it's turning into slush, but it's too cold in that there's still snow everywhere so I can't actually ride on the road that's there. <sighs> Just try not to let it get me down too much. It's um, very frustrating because it's pretty much the only hot spring I know about until I get back into either Utah or Idaho and all the other ones I know that are in like Yellowstone Park are not accessible because that park won't let you drive on any of the roads. And I'm gonna go up to Grand Teton and probably find out that I can't drive on any of those roads either, but might as well give it a shot. And then, uh, yeah, as soon as I get turned down from that or whatever happens up there, I'm just gonna make it head south and go straight to uh, Utah and I'm meeting up a friend in Salt Lake City in a couple of days. So I'm just gonna head that way and wait till the snow disappears again. Whew, it's very frustrating. Guys, there's a moose over here. A freaking moose. Ugh, gotta get some of this. Well, I found myself another hot spring. This one's called the Kelly Warm Springs. They're not really hot, but they're really big. So, uh, and they're right in the Grand Teton National Park. So I get to see the mountains and stuff in the background. Nice spot for a bath. Well, I won't say it's the nicest hot spring I've ever been to, but it's definitely the biggest. It's huge. You can like swim along in warm, hot-ish water, and there's all this crazy moth, moss growth, which would gross me out, but it smells really nice. <laughs> so, I'm kind of enjoying it. A local stopped by and told me this is actually a pool in this whole area. They filmed a bunch of Django Unchained here, which is super rad. Um, 
there's a scene where Django is like having a flashback to his wife and she's in like a steam bath type of thing or like a steam pool, like a hot spring. And they filmed that right here in the winter time. I think it was a winter time, I don't know. Anyway, <laughs> that's kind of cool. I love that movie. And uh, I just keep walking in on movie sets everywhere I go. So I'm in a much better mood now. I think I really need to watch that. Um, I thought it was just caffeine that really affected my happiness up and down, but the time between baths has a big de determiner as well. So uh, I gotta make sure that I, I stay bathed just to, you know, not stink, but also um, to keep my mood up because yeah, I was not super happy after being turned down at that last spot and and all that. It was kind of grumpy today. Plus I smashed my head like twice today already, which is yeah, definitely short a few brain cells from this morning. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna make myself another coffee. I'm gonna sell some lunch right here. And then we'll go explore around uh, Grand, Grand Titties, big old titty park. We'll have a good time. Oh, all right, for lunch, we're having a bit of a ham sandwich with tomatoes big chunk of Havarti, jalapeno, pepper jack, whatever cheese, some spinach, a little bit of mayo, some slices of tomato, and then some sriracha mixed in there. And then uh, on the side, I'm having a nice chicken noodle soup. Just a big old pick me up in the middle of the day. <laughs> is completely clear but it's still closed for another month uh, for bureaucratic reasons so I can't actually get the van in there but I can ride my mountain bike in there and that's what I'm gonna do just to get to the foot of the uh, Grand Teton mountain which I probably won't see because of the cloud cover still be nice to get the mo mountain bike off and just go for a little ride anyway just to say I was here Awesome bike ride. Too bad the weather kind of covered up the actual mountain. I'm going to continue to imagine it as like the R-rated version in my head. Anyway, we're going to start making our way a bit south from here because Yellowstone and everything north of here is all shut down anyway. And uh, we'll see if we can't find ourselves a good camp spot. Make some dinner. Oh, dinner. I forgot about dinner. Dinner's going to be good.
right, third campsite's the charmer. I, 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 oh, this is kind of frustrating, but, uh, you know, at least the landscape is beautiful, and uh, I just, I really don't like the snow. Like, I just don't, like, I like snow. It's very pretty. I just hate when it sticks around and, like, screws with all my research. So every time that I go somewhere, they go, no, it's closed because of snow. But, like, it's late March now. Why is the snow still here? Okay, it's not invited. I mean, February was expected, like, end of January. You start packing up and leaving. And it's, like, late March now. Unwelcome guest. Big time. I don't know. I don't know how long they have snow in Idaho anyway. Actually, Wyoming. Actually, no, I'm back in Idaho now. All right. I'm just going to make some dinner. Champ wants to go outside real bad. We're just going to do, you know, stuff. What? Tonight for dinner, we're having Champ's favorite food in the whole wide world, pizza. Oh yes, Champ, that's right. Yep, yep, it's right. Better wag that tail, it's coming. So I don't have an oven in this van, which... I didn't have... So I don't have an oven in this van, which would be really nice, but uh, I figured out kind of a way to get almost an oven. I'm using a cast iron pot. I'm putting spacers in the bottom of it. These spacers are actually mason jar lids. And then on top of that, I'm laying my camp pot in there to raise it up from the bottom and let the heat kind of circulate around it. I'm still getting about like 70% of the heat on the bottom and 30% on the top, but this is about as close as I'm gonna get. And we're gonna make pizza.